And now I'm broadcasting. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the pitching session this afternoon. We'll be starting in a few moments. We'll just wait for everyone to join us. Hi, good afternoon. Very welcome for those of you that are joining us. We'll be starting shortly. Just wait for the rest of uh, the participants to join the room. Hi everybody, welcome to this afternoon's session. We'll be starting shortly, but I just wanted to welcome you before we, uh, before we start and we'll, we'll um, just wait for more people to arrive. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the session. We'll just wait for one more moment just uh, whilst people trickle in and then we can make an official start. Well, let's make a start, shall we? My name's Tim Messeder and I work for the KTN and uh, I'm, this is my principal programme, so you'll have seen a lot of me um, throughout this week. Welcome to the pitching session. Um, we're very glad that you're able to join us. There's some fantastic presentations that you're going to listen uh, to and I think you'll really enjoy the talent that's been showcased um, and the opportunities that exist as well. So I'm very pleased that you can join us this afternoon. Let me just go through a couple of um, things that we're going to be um, talking about. Um, this is a uh, competition. So we are gonna ask you to vote at the end of the session for your preferred pitch. And uh, the way that we'll, what we'll do then for the winner is we'll showcase them across the, some of the KTN platforms and give them some added exposure. So do take a note of the presentations that you think should win. Uh, we aren't going to take questions today because uh, we won't have time to, to get through that and it would be a bit of a technological nightmare to organise because we have got 18 pitches today. So doing a Q&A for that would be far too involved. However, we do want to let you know that we've got opened up the networking session uh, on Meeting Mojo. Details are on your screen. So you do have an opportunity to contact uh, some of the, the people that have presented and network with them and to find out more information. So do please take advantage of that, of that opportunity. That will be from three o'clock to four o'clock um, UK time this afternoon. So directly after this meeting, you can, you can take advantage of that. If you do want to tweet about this, you're very welcome to. You can use the Twitter AgriFoodAfrica um, and that will uh, sort of 
uh, link up with the rest of the program. So um, let me start this, start, start the session, apologies for that. We'll start the session in a few moments. Just take a note of the delegates that you like because um, we'll be voting at the end. Okay, so let's, without much ado, we'll, we'll start with the winner from last week. We're going to start the session by showing the pitch of the winner from last week, which was Andy Ritchie from Anti Frontier. Um, and this is actually a new pitch that he has submitted for this week. But otherwise, we're going to start by uh, showing his pitch. So, congratulations, Andrew, uh, for winning. And we really hope that the spotlight will help you get some more visibility and find new collaborators. Hello, my name is Andy Ritchie and I'm the Managing Director of We are an agribusiness investment and agri-advisory firm. We only do agriculture and we only do Africa. We have offices in Kenya covering East Africa and in Nigeria covering West Africa. As an African business, we see firsthand the high growth and high growth potential of the continent. This is illustrated quite well by this graph from the IMF showing world forecast GDP growth with Sub-Saharan Africa outperforming Europe and other Western economies. As an agribusiness and agri-investment advisory firm, we offer a wide range of services including helping businesses to become investment ready and raise finance thereafter. We also help investors to build agri-investment strategies and to source credible investment opportunities. We also offer agribusiness feasibility studies covering commercial, market, technical and financial. We've helped businesses to successfully enter the agri-sector following our feasibility studies, including avocado and macadamia plantations as well as dairy and poultry enterprises. We're currently undertaking a detailed value chain study for Nigeria to help a new en entrant enter the market. If you'd like to understand more about what we have to offer, please do get in touch. Thank you. So we're going to start with today's competition. And our first pitch is by Sandra Agrocerca, and she will be pitching about their technology uh, and carbon farming services in Ghana. Hello, I'm Sandra, co-founder Agrocerca. Global population increase from 1961 to 2019 was from 3.1 to 7.7 .7 billion, and is estimated to increase to 9.7 billion by 2050. Traditional agricultural practices such as plowing, bush burning, etc., account for 10 to 12 percent of greenhouse gas emissions. Agriculture has reached a crossroads between meeting the needs of an ever-growing world population and protecting the environment. Now is the time to drive sustainable agriculture and soil management as a means for advancing the sustainable development goals. Carbon farming or conservation farming, used of cover crops and mulch helps to filter pollutant, renew fresh water supplies, increase plant available water capacity, moderate soil temperature, and increase soil resilience against agronomic drought. With all these parameters improved by adapting conservation agriculture, there has to be proper tools to measure and monitor to help the farmer make informed decisions and interventions. In this COVID-19 season, farmers are facing numerous challenges, including supply chain disruptions, for a workforce shortage, just to name a few. Crisis, however, provide a perfect window of opportunity to change and adapt. Automated solar irrigation, GPR to assist with groundwater location for irrigation, drone spraying, and soil... Hello, I'm Sandra, co-founder AgroCircle. Global population increased from 1961 to 2019, we're looking for funding and collaboration, uh, collaborators willing to train and establish technologies in the area of soil testing and drones. And we're offering a training farm and linked to farming groups, including women and children. Thank you. Pitch number two is by Dr. Joe Gold at the University of Nottingham, who will be talking about sustainable food products.
Hi, I wanted to use this short pitch to introduce what I do at the University of Nottingham. I'm Dr Jo Gould, an Assistant Professor in Food Science, based within the Division of Food, Nutrition and Dietetics at the Sutton Bonington campus. And at that campus we have two main facilities, the Food Processing Facility, which is a pilot scale food grade environment where we can manufacture food products and contains equipment such as extruder, meat processing, ice cream crystallisation and thermal processing. In support of that, we have a biomaterials laboratory where we can understand the functionality of ingredients, which helps us to predict how they may perform in a food product. In this laboratory, we have microscopes, particle sizing equipment, thermal property analysis, as well as structural and interfacial equipment. My interest within this remit is in sustainable protein, and that can range from plants, particularly legumes, to insects, which is a major focus of my research at the moment as a sustainable and nutritious source of protein that we hope to incorporate in more food products, as well as valorizing protein from food waste. And for these proteins, I'm really interested in looking at the relationship between structure, functionality, processing, and final functionality or product quality. Look in a range of microstructures, including emulsions, foams, gels, and extruded expanded products. We currently have an Agritech 8 project, which is looking at high protein shelf stable expanded products made with insects and materials indigenous to Nigeria. I'm really interested in looking, at more, looking for more collaborations in Africa to add to our existing one in Nigeria and also Senegal. Thank you. The third pitch of this afternoon is by Eric Hewitson from Will Networks, who will be pitching about their IoT connectivity company. Wealth Networks are a Cambridge UK based IoT connectivity company. We specialise in uh, connecting sensors and devices in a wireless way using technologies such as LoRaWAN, NB-IoT, Sigfox, etc. Um, it's basically getting data off sensors that are out in the environment um, and getting that data into the cloud and into apps that farmers uh, and agricultural uh, specialists can use. So we're looking to connect with soil moisture sensor companies, weather stations, slurry monitoring, livestock tracking, etc. And we'd like to partner with those sensor companies, but also agribusinesses in general, uh, sensor manufacturers, agronomics companies, and research institutes uh, that are looking to find cost-effective ways to get data from their sensors into their uh, data analytics packages. Now we have um, developed a uh, relationship with a major satellite company in Europe and we're going to be providing the LoRaWAN to satellite connectivity direct from the sensor to satellite and this major project which is going to take um, s six months to two years to sort of develop and get to commercialization so we're in the early testing phase at the moment we're looking to partner with um, with agricultural organizations that are willing to to help us to um, see what's going to be beneficial to the agricultural community so we're, we want to work with um, with farms with, with uh, researchers um, to to show that um, going direct from sensor to satellite which will solve some of the problems around distance and location uh, locality etc reduce the amount of time people have to spend going to sensors to get data off um, and show that there's a, a cost benefit to, to farming and we can help with some of the big problems that we know uh, exist in, in, in agriculture currently especially uh, in Africa and um, yeah if you want to be part of that and part of the future of IoT in agriculture then, then please do uh, look to work with Wild Networks. Thank you. The fourth person pitching is Martha Ogusu, who will be pitching about their Fable Fruit Juice Company. Hi everyone, my 
My name is Marfa. I'm one of the directors of Favour Fruit Juice. We're based in Ghana. We aim to meet to be the biggest fruit juice company in West Africa. We've acquired 300 acres of land and we're going to be growing fruits and juicing and bottling for the West African market as well as for exports. We've got 300 acres of land. We are planting oranges, pineapples, mangoes, apples, watermelons, and we'll be juicing them and bottling them for the West African market and also for exports. If you're interested in this project, we have started already. We're building our plant as I speak and the farms are being prepared as well. Please contact me on info at wordtoafrica.org or UK 078-776-79304. My contact details are on the next slide. If you're interested in this project, the biggest fruit juice company in West Africa, please contact Marfa on 078-776-79304, UK number. Okay, thank you. Pitch number five is by Fiona Lahai from the University of Reading who's pitching about their platform for climate change research on COCO. Hello, um, I am Dr. Fiona Lahav. I'm a postdoctoral researcher in the COCO Research Group, um, which is part of the School of Agriculture Policy and Development at the University. So the COCO Research Group here have been um, working specifically on climate change effects on COCO physiology since 2009, but we have a long history of working with COCO dating back more than 30 years. At the moment, we are developing a platform for climate change research in COCO, and we're looking for collaborators to help us extend this programme. So we're looking for potential collaborators based in West Africa who are working with COCO farmers or who have access to COCO experimental field sites and ideally these would be based across different agroecological zones. The idea that we're working with is to, um, to understand and model the influence of climate on yield variation in cocoa. And the overall aim of this would be to develop a yield prediction tool for cocoa. And um, we currently have a GCRF funded project running in Ghana, uh, where we are carrying out preliminary studies in this area. The COCO Research Group at the University of Reading can offer state-of-the-art experimental facilities which are designed to enable long-term studies of mature fruit-bearing cocoa trees under controlled environment conditions. Within the facilities we can grow cocoa under different temperature regimes, different irrigation regimes and we can also enrich the atmosphere with CO2. As part of our current program we are developing a crop model for cocoa incorporating data we have collected from previous controlled environment studies. However, going forward, we would like to extend our input data to incorporate more complex field level responses to enhance the predictive capabilities of this model. And as I said previously, the, um, the overall aim of this work would be to uh, ultimately produce a, a yield prediction tool for COCO. So we'd be really happy to hear from any potential collaborators um, or people who are interested in working with us uh, in the future uh, to try to develop a project under this agri-food initiative. Thank you. The sixth speech is titled Smart Solutions for Global Agri-Food Safety and is by Jayan Srikumar at Exor Scientific Limited. Exor Scientific is an award-winning SME based in the UK city of Liverpool. We specialise in the design and manufacture of smart IoT enabled field deployable sensor systems for point of need analyses of liquids and gases. Much of our work to date has been aligned with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, and particularly with SDGs 3, 6 and 14. We are now seeking opportunities to develop novel applications for our technology and to build strong new partnerships for collaborative research and development in support of improved health and nutrition, food security and agroeconomic and agroecological sustainability across We are able to develop our advanced spectroscopic and mass spectrometric technologies to deliver affordable, smart, point of need monitoring of environmental conditions and soil, air and water quality in agricultural and aquaculture ecosystems. 
through the real-time identification and measurement of a very broad range of chemical and environmental data, including soil moisture, temperature and humidity, our technology will support farmers' efforts to better manage their resources and farming practices, to optimise crop yields and nutrient profiles, to mitigate environmental damage and to minimise the risk of poor health outcomes resulting from exposure to toxins. The technology is extremely easy to use and will empower stakeholders with highly accurate multi-parameter data without the need for specialist training or the use of additional equipment. Pitch number seven is from Emmanuel Quasi from ME Farms, who will be pitching about their Cashew Farm project. Hello, my name is Emmanuel Kwesi Eboa of ME Farms in Ghana, West Africa. ME Farms, we are into cashew farming and vegetables as well as maize farming and a livestock farming naming piggery, poultry farm, duck, rabbit and other local bears. MF farms we use one stone to kill many bells. We are looking for an investor in a form of loan, grant, or equity with a return of 40%. At MF farms, we believe that you are what you eat. Thereby, we what we practice is organic farming, which gives maximum satisfaction in terms of health and also good return for your pocket. MA Farms is looking for 1 million Ghana CD for the cashew project, approximately 180,000 dollars and 50,000 US dollars for the livestock farming. MA Farms believes that if we are able to get these funds, we will employ many people and also get income for whoever helps us to develop this project, to expand the project as well. Pitch number eight is titled Biosuccess, helping to promote mycoinsecticides and is from Berlin, the look at CABI. Hello, I'm Dr. Belinda Luke, and I work for CABI, a not-for-profit organisation delivering world service to agriculture. And along with our commercial partners as similar, who are specialised in environmental monitoring, modelling and prediction, we have produced Biosuccess, an app to help promote the use of microinsecticides. Our work concentrated in China, we were looking at controlling the Chinese locusts. If you look at the map on the left hand side labelled the 15th of April, you will see a range of colours going from pink, red, orange, yellows, greens, blue and eventually black. The purple at the bottom means that it would take 14 days to kill 90% of the locust population after a microinsecticide had been applied. But the black area at the top would take 40 days and this is due to different environmental parameters. If you look at the map on the right hand side date labelled the 15th of September, you'll see that the colours have changed. And this is because, again because of environmental parameters. So in the light purple area, it would only now take 10 days to kill 90% of the population. So today we are looking for commercial companies who sell mycoinsecticides and it doesn't have to be just for locust control, it can be for control of any insects. We'd also like to speak to purchasers of mycoinsecticides, for example, FAO, governments, farmers. We'd really appreciate feedback on our early stage biosuccess app. One part of the app is called the last chance tool. Here you can put in your hatch date, the stage you'd like to kill, the latitude and longitude of where the problem is. You press the calculate button and then it will give you the last date that you can apply your mycoinsecticide, shown here 
in the red at the bottom of the slide. If you'd like to know more about this, please do contact me, Belinda Luke, at b.luke at cabby.org. Thank you for your time. Pitch number nine is from Ademiawa from August 3 Investment Limited and he's pitching about uh, their optimization of cultivation underwater conservation strategies for sustainable development. Hello, my name is Maiwa Ademiawa and I am the Agricultural Investment Manager on behalf of August 3 Investment Limited. We are a UK based investment firm with interest in West Africa. Um, we currently have access to 15,000 hectares of land in Ogun State in Nigeria, and we are looking at um, optimization of cultivation on the water conser um, conservation strategies for sustainable development. As a basis of this, we are looking at the development of large scale remote sensoring for irrigation, development of ground based sensor networks for measurement of actual water usage and crop production, measurement of constraints of production from pests and diseases and the reduction of waste training and development of local human resources for production and further agri-tech development, um, full scaling of the systems over large areas um, available. Um, and project management, as well as exploring additional innovative um, options. Um, such as biogas, refrigerated containers, improving the variety of species that, that we use, and satellite imagery and the utilization of drones due to the limitations of access in remote and rural areas. Um, what we are looking for is like-minded people who can establish any synergies with what we're doing and what they're doing in order to share knowledge and build um, a platform that we can capitalize on collectively. And um, what can we offer? Um, we can offer, like I said, 15,000 hectares of land, local knowledge, experienced labor, and access to local and national decision makers. Thank you. Pitch number 10 is from the Food and Beverage Recycling Alliance, who are pitching about the Power of Five project. The Food and Beverage Recycling Alliance was set up in 2018 as an, an NGO and a producer responsibility organization for the food and beverage industry. So it's set up in compliance with the National Extended Producer Responsibility, and currently we have 11 members. The long-term goal is to enhance the operations within the waste management supply chain to focus on collection, reuse, recycling, and energy recovery of our post-consumer waste in Nigeria. The Power of Five is a design that was adopted for an integrated approach that involves all the stakeholders in the waste management value chain due to the growing waste concern in Nigeria. It identifies communities with little or no access to establish waste management services, and then is able to create a functional circular economy within those communities. It involves working with formal collectors, five formal collectors in the different communities to ensure that they are responsible for the daily data collection and reporting. So that is a way of leveraging on the already existing waste collection market and structures within those communities. And then FBRA will be able to evaluate and inspect the database of those collectors. The Power of Five involves the use of five waste pickers in each community. So those waste pickers are identified in the five communities. So in each community, we're going to have five waste pickers in each community, making a total of 25. When they are identified, then we can formalize and recognize the value they bring by empowering them with these tricycles to help them to collect recyclables within the community. The benefit of this Power of Five project is to enhance the waste management operations and, and, and the recycled material supply chain in Nigeria to formalize the waste pickers in this community 
to increase the collection rate and the quality of the recyclables from source is also to encourage the development of the waste private sector in Nigeria. That is the power of five, five communities, five collectors, and five waste pickers in each community. Thank you very much for giving the opportunity to FBRA to present the Power of Five project to you all. Thank you. Pitch 11 is from Bruce Grief at the University of Manchester, who's pitching about their low-cost agri-sensors and machine learning technology. Pitch number 12 is from Matthew Francis at EcoSteam, who's pitching about their biostimulant. Hi, I'm Matthew Francis, CEO of EcoSteam. EcoSteam is a UK-based manufacturer and distributor of natural biostimulants. These are a combination of 137 natural plant extracts, which when mixed and applied to agricultural crops, increase crop yield by between 25 and 200%. We have tested these products extensively. Um, we know that they work across all agricultural crops. So whether it's wheat, rice, cassava, pineapples, mangoes, these, um, these organic uh, biostimulants will work effectively and increase agricultural crop yield. So what are we looking for? We're looking to work with African distributors who would be able to distribute our products to agricultural crop growers throughout Africa. We are looking to work with governments, regional distributors and trade bodies to arrange for or organise a distribution channel for our organic plant products so that these can increase crop yields. This would be beneficial to the government, the distributor, the farmers, but also the consumers, because they would be consuming healthier and better quality um, agricultural uh, fruits and vegetables. So that's what we're looking for. Pitch 13 is titled, A Platform to Transform Animal Health and Production, and it's from Simon Holler at Barefoot Lightning. Hi, I'm Simon from Barefoot Lightning, and I want to take you through our animal platform, which covers health, nutrition, and animal and farm management. 
we've developed a simple structure to classify the symptoms so that farmers and animal health workers can quickly locate a symptom that they're interested to see. Playing an animation lets users quickly understand if this is the symptom that they're seeking. And it's far more effective than pure images or videos. Once the user has decided which symptoms they've seen, they can simply select these to see a list of possible diseases. The farmer first enters the symptoms into the phone, then presses identify and gets a first symptom match. The next step is that we move into a virtual consultation where the farmer will be shown a series of animations of different symptoms in order to refine the match. This improved match can then be refined further by repeating the virtual consultation steps until the match is ready to be shared with a vet. Vets can then request more information from the farmers using a virtual consultation cycle, or they can then speak directly to the farmers go directly to a diagnosis or arrange a farm visit. We've been working with a number of leading academic partners such as ILRI in Kenya and also the University of Liverpool's Veterinary School. We also have strong industrial partnerships such as Farmers Choice in Kenya as well as Airtel Money for our dairy projects in Malawi. We're looking for motivated and passionate partners that are ready to help us get started straight away. We also expect that their deep knowledge and connections within the sector will help us both innovate and reach the target markets. For sustainability, it's important that we also work with the finance and telecom sectors, and we're happy to work with partners from across all of these groups. Pitch 14 is from John West at Rotterdam State Research, who's pitching about their uh, idea for detection and control of crop diseases. Hello, my name's John West from Rotherham State Research, which is located just north of London. My expertise is in detection and control of fungal diseases of crops. I've worked on a wide range of crops, including arable, horticulture and vegetable crops. I'm really interested in connecting with African farming companies, also agronomy or extension companies that are interested in solving challenges they may have in control of uh, crop diseases. And uh, what we can bring is uh, the development of diagnostic assays. These could be fairly simply done by a person in the field. Uh, they can also be integrated with air sampling devices, uh, including quite simple air sampling devices that are cheap and easy to use, or the more sophisticated type you can see on the screen that actually does an automatic test at the end of each day to detect uh, the pathogen if it's there and sends a mobile phone text to the user to alert them of the spores being present. Uh, we're also working on mobile spore sampling systems that can be used in a, a car or uh, on an aircraft to cover larger areas. And lastly, in a separate Innovate UK project, I'm working with experts in um, optical sensing using spectroscopy, imaging and uh, fluorescence measurement to uh, detect crop stresses. And I'd be happy to work with anyone on a similar project. My name again, it's John West, J-O-N dot West at Rothamsted dot AC dot UK. Thank you very much. Pitch 15 is from Rob Smurfit at GoGrow, who is pitching about their modular growing solutions uh, for Africa.
Pitch 16 is from Natalie Goth, uh, who's lo looking for collaborators from the University of College London. Hi, my name is Natalie Goth, and I am Program Manager for Nice Transfer Partnerships and Enterprise Secondments at University College London. Here's a brief presentation around collaborating with University College London through the GCRF Agri-Food Africa Mission. We're going to briefly talk about what we're looking for and what we can offer you. UCL is predominantly looking for collaboration partners, especially industrial or commercial businesses. Collaboration between academia and external organisations, such as industry, governments and other innovative partners, has always been vital to solving the big global brand challenges, as not one organisation can do it alone. We have a focus on industrial and commercial partners because through our existing research activities, we have a strong and established international network for research. And the main focus for UCL at the moment, as part of this mission, is to take part in the Agri-Food Africa KTP pilot. So we're looking for industrial partners related to that. However, that doesn't mean we're not open to other types of collaborations or other projects funded by other mechanisms, so please do get in touch. UCL can offer a lot, because we're amongst the best in the world. Consistently placed in the global top 20 in a wide range of global rankings, we're currently number eight worldwide, and we offer research excellence, strength through international collaborations and networking, strong ethos of integrity and input diversity, and practical experience. We have a broad range of project experience we can bring to any type of collaboration. UCL operates in a global context and is committed to research, innovation and the promotion of global understanding in all of its activities. We have 11 faculties, each home to world-class research, teaching and learning in a wide range of academic disciplines across all levels. So if you are interested in collaborating, in making the most of the expertise that we have on offer, and help us work with you to create real world impact, please do get in touch. We want to work with you to help turn your ideas into reality. And the last speech of this afternoon is number 17 from Betty Bonardel at AB5, and it's titled Farmer Charlie, the Smart Agriculture Hub. Hi, I'm very pleased to be given the opportunity to present AB5 Consulting and Farmer Charlie. AB5 is an SME with a five-person staff located in West London. At AB5, we develop innovative solutions in an enabled environment. That means that we create the right ecosystem to ensure that new technologies thrive. We work with clients on digital solutions, the Internet of Things and telecommunication service applications. In addition to supporting the projects of our clients, we also develop our own in-house projects. One of these projects is Farmer Charlie. Working on a study on weather stations, we realised that smallholder farmers lack vital information which can significantly increase their yield, manage their crops and access favourable markets. For instance, by tracking the humidity in the field, we can help farmers optimise irrigation. By providing market opportunities, farmers will be able to sell their produce at a better price. We will be testing our solution on 21 cassava farms in Nigeria this summer through an Innovate UK Catalyst Round 9 project. Farmer Charlie brings connectivity to small farms at a very low cost. Our solution is fully suited for crop rotation and intercropping. Our aim is to develop the project further towards a zero waste farm. For example, the peel of the cassava can be fully reused. Cassava is drought resistant, but once harvested, it needs to be processed rapidly. We are looking to develop a local factory of gary and starch, common products of cassava. 
Given that catalyst starch now represents 55% of the global starch market, it would be a produce for both local consumption and export. We eventually want to offer our solution to other African countries and expand to other crops. This means adapting it to local needs, conditions and farming practices. We are looking for partners and users and we're particularly keen to support women. Please do get in touch with us if you want more information on Farmer Charlie and to collaborate with our project. We can't wait to meet you. We have one more pitch now, and this is the last pitch of the day. In Nigeria, like most of Sub-Saharan Africa, lack of storage facilities means that the supply chain is highly vulnerable. Crops go rotten on farms before getting to the market. Geden offers a solution to this problem, the Village Cold Store. The Village Cold Store preserves crops for up to three months. It uses off-grid solar power. It has a simple construction, making use of used tires and local clay. On the other hand, it uses modern technology for the cooling unit and the ethylene removal unit. It benefits the local economy, employing women and helping to entice young people into farming. It is also beneficial to the subsistence farmer. With a storage capacity of up to 50 tons, it controls nature and it controls the market. Who are we? We are Geddon, a Nigerian startup enterprise looking to provide sustainable solutions to subsistence farmers in sub-Saharan Africa. We've got technical support from Europe. We've got local contacts with Farmers Association in six Nigerian states. We already have strong relationships with people and institutions in both Nigeria and the UK. And we have the concept to work with the disabled for the supply of used tires and clays. Now, what do we need? We need seed funding of 80,000 pounds per cold store. This is the perfect opportunity to make a real difference to the food supply chain. Thank you very much. You can see our contact details below. Welcome back everybody. So we're now going to go to the uh, voting section of this session. Um, you can see uh, on the screen you will have an option to vote. Uh, please choose uh, one person that you feel best represents uh, your vote. I believe you need to submit one for Group A and one for Group B. And the person with the most votes will be declared the winner and then we'll showcase them across the KTM platforms. So we had some fantastic um, pictures there. It was really interesting to hear the different uh, people present or the different areas. And uh, I can see some potential collaborations in the mix. So if you are some of those uh, people that are looking to collaborate, I suggest that you go to Meeting Mojo. It's going to be open after this session. You can start that discussion now. Um, there is also a slide mm. which you can see, which, which has the um, some of the addresses here as well. So if you wanted some contact details, you can have that. So I'll just go back so that you can carry on voting. You can see we've had some of the votes in. Great to have a few more of you. That's it, we're, we're getting there. Keep those votes coming in. So you need to submit one for group A and then one for group B. That's it, keep going. Come on folks, let's get that number up a bit in terms of proportion. We've got about close to half of you have voted now. Tim, there's been a question whether or not we can get the email page back if possible. 
but maybe leave leave on that out once we've done the voting yes absolutely thank you debbie yeah so i will leave the um put this back so you can see and uh, i'll leave that at the end so don't worry we'll you'll be able to copy that down and the other the other option as well is this will be on youtube um and facebook at some point at uh, some point so um if you want to rewatch these you can do that at your leisure then of course when you get to the end of the presentation of, of the video, you can just pause it and write down any email addresses that you want. So that's the other way to access that. Okay, I think we uh, we should um, close the poll. I tell you what, let's give it to three minutes, then we've got 10 more seconds and then just to cast your vote and then we'll have had uh, all those votes in. Okay, let's close the poll. And so uh, we have, so it's, uh, we have one winner. So it's the Village Cold Store right at the end there uh, with six votes. So um, congratulations to you, you've won that. So we will broadcast um, your, we'll get in touch with you and then we'll be advertising a bit more about your project and sort of showcasing that across. Um, so well done for submitting that. So let me just give you a few more um, bits of information just so that you're aware of what's happening um, for, our, for the rest of the week. Um, so it's a networking session directly after this. Do please join that. And then we're back tomorrow morning at uh, 10 o'clock UK time. And uh, you're welcome to join us for that. But that's it from me. Thank you very much for joining us. And we look forward to seeing you in future sessions. Thank you.